Hey guys, it's Adrian, and today I am super excited. Yuffie has just sent me their brand new SoloCam S340, and this is a huge step and upgrade over their previous generation of the solo cam cameras. All right, so why is this such a big deal? Well, because it has two cameras on here, you have a 3K camera that's capable of a 135 degrees field of view, and you also have a 2K camera that has 3X optical zoom. That means you can get a wide angle view of your property, and you can also punch in, say you wanted to see a license plate or more close up facial details. The new SoloCam S340 also allows you to get a 360 degree field of view because it pans and tilts. Not only can you do that manually, it also has AI tracking and detection allowing it to automatically pan and tilt as needed. There's also a 100 lumen spotlight allowing you to have color night vision or black and white night vision. There's onboard storage. There's also a solar charging panel as well. So let's take a closer look at the UV SoloCam S340 and a big thank you to UV for sending this out for review. The package contains the SoloCam S340. There's an optional solar panel, which I highly recommend using, an extension cable for the solar panel connector, mount for both the camera and solar panel, a USB Type-C cable to charge the camera up before installation, quick start guide, positioning sticker, and mounting screws for both the camera and the solar panel. The design on the SoloCam S340 is just so standout and different from the previous generations which are more rectangular, but you can see the design here is due to being able to pan and tilt as well. Now, if we take a look at the front, we can see we have a status LED indicator there. We have a speaker. We also have a microphone at the front sensors. And of course, we have the standout feature, those dual cameras. First, we have the 2K camera, which is capable of 3X optical zoom, and it is an F1.6 lens, which is gonna be great for low light situations. The second lens is the 3K wide angle lens, also an f1.6 lens and a 135 degree field of view. The 100 lumen spotlight is located on the top right corner. We have up to 360 degrees of panning functionality and up to 70 degrees of tilt functionality. The rear of the camera has the mounting connector. We also have a sync button and there's a weather sealed covering here that when removed gives access to the USB-C port. Now this is gonna be necessary if you want to connect the optional solar panel. The very top of the unit has threads for two screws and this is an area where you can mount that optional solar panel using the supplied mount. The solar panel promises improved charging functionality and if we take a look at the underside, you can see we have a screw thread here and this is to either mount the solar panel directly on the S340 camera body like I showed earlier or off camera. And then we also have a right angle connector, which I'll explain next. Installing the SoloCam S340 is pretty simple. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to open up this weather sealed area if you're gonna be using that optional solar panel, again, which I highly recommend. Once you do that, you're gonna take the mount and if you study the mount, there's three screw holes here. You'll install this into a wall or some type of surface. Press down where it says push here on both sides. So you'll squeeze these in, slide it till you hear that click. And you can see that there is a gap between the camera body and the mount where it's gonna be positioned on the wall. And the reason for that is that once you get access to this weather sealed area here, you're gonna take this right angle connector here and connect it through. And you can see that's a very nice and clean, simple way to insert it. So this has been a pretty well thought out system. Now, for the solar panel, this can be mounted directly to the top of the camera unit. Again, using that mount that we have here. This can go directly on the top, or you can install this somewhere very far away from the camera. If you decide to mount the solar panel further away from the camera body, you do have an extension cable that you can use to run between the camera body and the solar panel. The SoloCam S340 features two lenses. So the first is a 3K wide angle lens capable of 135 degrees field of view at f1.6. The second is a 2K telephoto or zoom lens capable of 3X optical zoom also at f1.6. There's also 360 degrees panning and 70 degrees tilt, a 100 lumen spotlight, there's color or black and white night vision, and there's a 2.2 watt solar panel. Onboard AI detection and tracking is available and there's also a gigabytes of onboard storage, which is expandable. There's two-way audio, a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, and it is Alexa and Google Voice Assistant supported. Homebase 3 connectivity is optional and it does provide enhanced AI detection. Let's go ahead and add the SoloCam S340 to the Eufy security app. So once you have the app downloaded, go ahead and click the plus icon, 
find battery camera, scroll until you see the SoloCam S340, add it to your existing home or create a new home. Now we're gonna press and hold the sync button for two seconds until we hear a beep. And we're now just gonna scan the QR code with the camera. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network, please wait. Setup was successful. Before enabling Homebase 3 functionality, if we go into motion detection, you can see we have human vehicle and all other motions. As well, if I go into general, into storage, and then local storage, I can see how many gigabytes of storage I have to record. Now, if I go into edge connection, you can see it says here the SoloCam S340 can join the edge ecosystem. So let's go ahead, click continue, click yes. I'm gonna pick the home base three right here. It says keep the camera close to the home base. I'm gonna click next. The camera is now connected to the home base, so I'll click done. So if I go into motion detection, you can see I now have a bunch more options. So I have human recognition, human detection, vehicle detection. I also have pet detection that wasn't there before. Additionally, if I go into general storage, you can see for local storage, it now shows the home base three. There's a one terabyte drive inserted in there right now. So I'll have much more storage and video playback history. And of course I can also install up to a 16 terabyte drive. The SoloCam S340 is now paired with the Eufy app and I'm just gonna do a live view test. And I can see that right now everything is working fine. So now I can permanently mount it outside. I'm installing my camera to my exterior wall. So first I'm gonna attach the solar panel mount to the top of the camera body using the supplied screws. Then I'm gonna screw in the solar panel. Connect the solar panel to the camera body using the cable. Position the mounting bracket to the wall. Mark it out using the positioning stickers if necessary. Drill in the holes, screw in the mount, and then finally attach the camera to the mount. In the Eufy security app, we can see that the S340 is currently charging by solar. I can see the Wi-Fi strength and that it's connected to the solar panel. Let's take a look at Live View. And you can see this is one of the great features of this camera. You know, we have this wide angle view at the top here and this 3X optical at the bottom. And you can see that the camera actually panned when I pulled it up because, you know, there was a fast moving car and it just tracked that. And of course, you can also go into a wide angle or sorry, full screen view. And you can see very wide angle. You can zoom in digitally if you want, or you can use the 3x optical zoom. And then you also have the option to go ahead and, you know, pan around and take a look at whatever is nearby. While we're in this full screen view or live view, we can also go ahead and trigger a manual recording. Say you saw something suspicious. You can also go ahead and enable the audio so you can hear what's going on outside. And you can hear that microphone pickup is quite good, but I'm gonna turn it off. We also have options to pan and tilt. You can also turn on the floodlight, take a screenshot, and of course you could go ahead and trigger the alarm manually. And it'll ask you, do you wanna do it with camera, sound only, light, or sound and light? and it does get quite loud. When we're in the vertical mode, we can also swipe over and we have an option to do a 360 pan, which is very handy. You can also turn the AI tracking on or off really quickly, and you can adjust the night vision options. In the full settings, this is where you could turn the camera on or off, and you can see the current battery life and that it's actively charging by solar. In motion detection, you could turn it on or off. If we go into activity zone, you can set an activity zone just so that you know only motion that occurs in this specific area will trigger an alert or recording i don't use that but you have the option under detection type we can set human vehicle or all other motions and we can set the detection sensitivity and i have it anywhere between four to seven now ai tracking this is really important this is what allows the camera to pan and tilt to track people, vehicles, and whatnot. The power manager is a super handy part of the app. So you can see, since I've installed this, I've had 4,330 events and 968 recordings. And that's in the last five days. It's not in the last 19,620 days. I am on the beta app, so this is gonna be polished on the final release. Now you can also set the working mode to optimal battery life, where each clip is only gonna be as long as 20 seconds and it's not gonna trigger a recording again if it detects the same object. Optimal surveillance is what you can use and this is gonna have a 60 second long clip and it's gonna record as much as possible. Now customized recording, 
you can set it from as low as a 10 second clip to a two minute clip and you could set the cooldown time in between recordings. You can also set this option here to end the clip early if motion stops. I've just left it on optimal battery life and it's been doing well so far. Power source is where you can specify if this will be a battery only type of setup or if you're going to be attaching the optional external solar panel which I have so I've selected that option. The dashboard section shows you know charging trends so you can see in the last seven days I've had a steady decline down and I'm losing about two percent of battery life and of course you can also look at a 30-day period. Now this is the amount of charge I've acquired on each of the last five days and I can see the total charging time and capacity gathered. Now this is an important area because I can make tweaks like changing the sensitivity or the clip length to extend my battery life. Preset positions is a super handy feature to have. So there's four preset positions right now and you can see I'm on the first one which is the middle. I could go and pick number two and it goes over to my backyard area here. Number three goes towards my front door and then number four is if someone was kind of like hiding trying to get into my windows there. So you can see you can go ahead and custom set these type of presets. You just move the camera where you want and then click set as default position. Pan tilt settings lets you enable the AI tracking. Again, I highly recommend having this on if you want to be able to automatically track any type of movement. You can also set the pan and tilt speed. You can also turn on the spotlight or turn it off and you can change the brightness of it as well. In video settings, this is where you can choose to have a watermark and you can decide if you want a timestamp and a logo or you could just remove them completely. View mode, this is where you can set it to have both cameras display at the same time or you can have a single view and it will use more battery life on the dual view. Now streaming quality, this is where you can set how good the video looks when you stream it from the camera. Under recording quality, again, pick 3K if you want the best quality footage. And night vision, you could set it to black and white color or you could turn it off completely. Under audio settings, you can choose if you wanna have audio recordings and you can also change the speaker volume and this does get quite loud. Under notification, I have it set the most efficient because I want my alerts as quick as possible, but you have other options to have a thumbnail with a little bit of a delay. Under general, this is where we could turn on the status LED light. I like to have that on all the time so people know that this camera is actually active and working. We can also change the Wi-Fi connection time zone and we can take a look at the storage so let's go to local storage so in the last five days i've used about 3.3 gigs and of course the camera will just override the older clips with new clips when this is completely full you can also share the device with another member of your family or a friend reviewing clips is quite simple so you click on the events tab and if you have more than one ufi camera go ahead and click the filter icon click your applicable camera in my case is the s340 and you can see i can see different categories here so vehicle 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 and you can see some that say human vehicle again let's go ahead and tap on one of these and from here you can see i have the dual view picked up i can also go ahead and download this clip share it or delete it and of course i can look at this in full screen as well Daytime video was nicely exposed, not too many blowouts or highlighted areas, and it really did an awesome job picking out faces, you know, clothes, signs on trucks, pretty much any type of detail you would want, you would get that in 3K detail. The 3X optical lens was also quite capable. Now it is coming in at 2K, a little bit under the 3K of the wide angle lens, but again, that's plenty capable, especially in 2023 when there's still camera brands offering 1080p quality. Night vision video was also very capable on here and it didn't matter if I just had it to kind of like the black and white mode with no ambient light around or if I had it with you know other cameras outputting a little bit of light or it was still a little bit bright in the day images were nicely exposed and it was easy to make out details. The detection range on here is rated for about 26 feet or 8 meters and from where I have the camera installed on my wall to where the end of my sidewalk is I would say it's within that 24 to 26 feet area. So what I did was I left the sensitivity pretty much to high because I just want as much, you know, video data as I can get. And pretty much anytime someone was crossing the sidewalk, the camera would easily pick up that motion and track them, you know, out of the frame. One thing to note is that, you know, when they entered the frame, maybe I would lose, say, like one or two seconds till motion detection kicked in and started recording them. So they would be, you know, maybe a third of the way into the frame or a quarter of the way into the frame, but it would follow them the entire way out of the frame. Here's an example of what the audio sounds like. You can hear that it's very clear, very loud, and there's no audio dropouts. 
There's also an option to add four preset points of interest with the camera. So anytime you pull up live view, you could just go to the pan and tilt mode, and then you could pick one of those four preset positions and the camera just jumps between them. So you can highlight, you know, areas of your backyard or the front of your house where you want to quickly monitor. Of course, if you want to manually pan and tilt, you can also do that in the app. So you have the option to change the pan and tilt speed. It can be breakneck fast or just medium speed or super slow if you want fluid motions. Storage is going to be really dependent on where you live and the type of settings you pick in the app. Now for context, I'm estimating that I'm going to get between 9 to 10 days of video playback history. Now if that doesn't sound like a lot to you, let me explain why. So I've had about 4,600 motion detection events in five days and I've had over a thousand recordings as well out of those 4,600 motion detections in that same five day span. So if you live anywhere, you know, half as busy as where I live, double that number. So, you know, you're going to get two weeks or a little bit more. And if you live somewhere even less busy, you know, I live on a corner lot, tons of cars coming and going, kids walking back from school, cars picking them up, you know, you'll easily get over a month. The home base allows you to add up to a 16 terabyte hard drive, which is an insane amount of storage. So you'll pretty much have lifetime storage if you need it. When I installed the camera, I was at 100% and after a little over five days, I'm at 88%. So I've lost 12% of battery life. Now to you, that may sound bad and it doesn't sound like I'm gonna make it the entire year, but let me give a bit of context again. That's based on over 4,600 motion detection events and over a thousand recording in the span of only five days, guys. That's like an insane number. And that's because when I was testing this out, I had the sensitivity set all the way to seven. It still probably is on seven right now. And when I looked at the charging trend in the solar dashboard on here, which is super handy, check that out. Um, it was showing that for the last three days, I was averaging, you know, a negative 2% decrease in battery life. So I wasn't charging enough to keep this topped up. I was actually losing 2% based on the settings I had. Now, after the last couple of days of really good sunny weather, it now shows I'm at parity. So I'm at 0% loss. So I'm just, you know, breaking even right now. And if the good weather keeps up like it has for the next days it's forecasted, I'll easily start climbing back up towards, you know, 90% or a little bit higher. So if you're looking for a solar powered camera system that's a pretty much all in one unit, this is one of the better options out there. There's not a lot of camera systems that have two lenses on there and not only do they have two lenses, one is a 3K, one is a 2K, you have that 3X optical and the 135 degrees wide field of view. While UFI cameras have always had capable motion detection, marrying that now with AI tracking is such a huge feature because anytime someone is just walking in front of my house or crossing, they can see the camera dynamically panning and tilting and following their every movement. So, you know, it's a good deterrent for someone who's just kind of walking around scoping the house. You know, they see that this is actively tracking them. So yeah, when you consider that you're getting that awesome video quality on here, 3K quality and 2K quality, dual recording from both camera lens. And again, with Eufy cameras, zero monthly fees, this is just an awesome option all around and there's not a lot of camera systems out there that can top this in terms of performance and value. If you're interested in picking up the Soulcam S340, I'm going to leave some links down below. Also, don't forget to check my pinned comments and video description. Anytime I have any type of new codes, I'm going to update it there. And if you have any questions, just feel free to leave them down below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one soon.